and welcome to BBC News with me, Geetha Gurumuthi. We are going to bring you a special programme tonight uh, to bring you the very latest on the elections that have been going on in Italy. It is a general election and Italians are waiting to find out who is going to form their new government. Now, of course, Italy is famous for its coalitions and this time it is even more uncertain than ever, partly because of the rise of the populist groups like the Five Star Movement who are predicted to do well today and partly due to changes in the whole voting system. These are pictures of today uh, Matteo Renzi casting his vote and of course uh, the polls are about to close. The former Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi, of course, has re-emerged as a political force, even though he can't stand and become Prime Minister as yet because of a fraud charge. But he's very much seen as a power behind the throne. But this is Matteo Renzi casting his vote today. Well, it is expected that there could again be a coalition. And uh, let's get the very latest now on the background to this whole election. Italians are electing members of both Houses of Parliament, 630 in the lower House of Deputies and 315 in the upper House, the Senate. This time the system has been tweaked, so a third of seats are first past the post, that is, the candidate with most votes in the district wins. The other two-thirds are chosen by proportional representation, based on the share of the vote nationally. This election sees some new faces and some not so new battling it out for supremacy. A key player is likely to be Silvio Berlusconi. Yes, he's back. The former Prime Minister heads Forza Italia, though a fraud conviction bars him from actually holding office, at least until next year. Mr. Berlusconi's teamed up with two parties on the hard right, including La Lega, led by Matteo Salvini, their anti-immigration and anti-Europe. Another key figure, Luigi Di Maio, heads the anti-establishment Five Star Movement. They could gain at the expense of the former Prime Minister Matteo Renzi's ruling centre-left Democratic Party, who are trailing in the polls. Italian politics is all about coalitions, so which combination could come out on top? One possibility is a right-wing coalition with Forza Italia and La Lega, joined by Brothers of Italy and some smaller centrist parties. Another outcome is a left-wing coalition, the Democratic Party combining with the More Europe Party. And the other centre-left party, Free and Equal, has so far refused the idea of a coalition with Renzi. There could be a German-style grand coalition between centre-left and centre-right. It's all very uncertain. Giannone there explaining a little bit of the background to this election. Uh, well, let's get the latest now from Katia Adler because she has been following also the build-up to today's vote. In polling stations across Italy today, there was a sense of uncertainty. Voters told us they wanted change, but weren't sure which political party to trust. Siamo sfruttati e frustrati. Italians are abused and frustrated. Politicians need to hear our voice today. I'm so worried about Italy. I said a prayer before coming to vote. Matteo Renzi and other centre-left leaders running Italy's current government are preparing for a bruising at the polls. Italians say their top concerns remain the insecure job market here, frustrations with the euro and mass irregular migration from Africa. <laughs> Luigi Di Maio is the leader to become Italy's largest political party. I caught up with him in Naples this morning, just before he cast his vote. Traditional politicians have kept telling Italians that everything is fine, when it's not. My party's motto is to be amongst the people. But the political system here favours coalitions, so his controversial party could be left out in the cold. <laughs> Meaning this familiar face could be kingmaker instead. Naples and the south of Italy will swing today's vote. Silvio Berlusconi campaigned here this weekend on behalf of a right-wing coalition 
peppered with populists. Like this rising star anti-immigration politician voting today in Milan. So what does this rather chaotic political picture mean for Italy and Europe? After all, this is the Eurozone's third largest economy. Confusion, or confusione as it's known here, is quintessentially Italian. Brussels is used to it, the financial markets seem prepared for it. They believe that a coalition government will water down more extremist populist policies on offer. But how does that help Italians get to grips with their problems? Viola Carofallo heads a civilian protest party in Naples. These days, Italy's politicians blame everything on immigration, but that's a lie. Youth unemployment, precarious contracts, that's our problem. That's why Italians live badly. Their votes now cast. All Italians can do is wait. Today's election will be followed by weeks of political horse trading. Change doesn't come fast in Italy. Katia Adler reporting there. Well, we are indeed getting details of the first projections from the Italian general election. Local media are predicting that there will be no overall majority in the new parliament. Uh, one report saying that the Five Star Party will be the largest single party. But let us get more now from Karen Giannoni, who joins us now live from Rome. Karen. Yes, welcome to Rome, Gita. An absolute deluge here. The polls have just closed, and uh, just as those polls closed, those first exit polls came out. Now, we have to treat them with a bit of caution. There is a, a significant margin of error that we're allowing for, but you uh, outlined the main headlines there. Uh, the Five Star Movement coming out by far the main, the largest single party, but the uh, exit poll also pointing to a hung parliament. No bloc or single party has managed to secure the necessary majority. So what we would expect now is a process of discussions, talks for the forming of a coalition government. Let's uh, talk to uh, Silvio Francescon and uh, Antonio Scarazzini. Silvio Francescon is Director of Centre for Foreign Relations. Antonio Scarazzini, the editor of Rivista Europei. Uh, first of all, Antonio, what does this actually mean in practice now? Well, in practice, it's not really, it's not going to be really different from what we have been seeing in the last weeks with the with the previous polls. Uh, well, actually, the, the big difference is that, the, as you said, the Movimento Cinque Stelle is going to be the first party, but five star movement, the yeah, first, yeah uh, but it's going to be over the 30 percent threshold, so it's, it's quite interesting. Uh, but the outcome, according to these numbers, and if these numbers are going to stay the same until tomorrow morning, uh, the outcome is almost the same. Uh, we don't have a majority, so we will start uh, negotiation. Uh, there will be hard negotiation. I think the most interesting thing, uh, as uh, Silvia said before, is that Forza Italia, uh, so Mr. Berlusconi's party and the Northern League are, uh, according to these numbers, on the same level. So we will see how the negotiations are going to be. Silvia, I think we're looking at pictures of the, the five-star election event. You can imagine this is a really significant achievement for someone, in a force that didn't exist a few years ago. Absolutely, you're totally right. Uh, if this is confirmed, it means that uh, almost one out of three people in Italy voted for the Five Star Movement. So definitely when we will start the negotiations, because nobody has reached, uh, no coalition has reached the 40% threshold that is required by this law in order to rule the country, I think the head of state will have to start with the Five Star Movement, no doubt about that. Right, because it would be very strange if a party with a far smaller share of the vote was allowed to start forming or trying to form a government? You cannot ignore it. I mean, it is a, such a, a bold statement by the Italians, uh, no doubt about that. And uh, as uh, we were saying before, there is another uh, indication, I think, which is particularly interesting, because if this is confirmed, and if uh, Matteo Salvini is ahead of Berlusconi... He's the Lega. He's, yeah, he's, he's the North League. It means uh, to me, at least, if this is confirmed, that uh, this is uh, the end uh, of the Berlusconi's leadership in the centre-right. And, of course, uh, the North League will have a strong say in that coalition. Antonio, I mean, what difference do you think this new electoral system has made? I mean, it was being looked at as a way of keeping the Five Star Movement down. Yeah, um, it appeared to be so. 
uh, of course, we need to consider that these figures can change very much during the night because this electoral system uh, as, is very Byzantine in this scheme. So first we are going to define uh, the proportional votes, and then we move to the first past the post vote. So it's, it's very difficult to take uh, to take a call now. Um, I think that uh, now it's really up to President of the Republic to decide uh, how to start this negotiation. And actually, I think the first milestone we have to to consider is that on the 23rd of March both the Senate and the Chamber are going to appoint their presidents. So at that time we will see if we have a kind of majority, kind of balance between the groups, and then we can understand how the negotiation can come. Silvia, the uh, left or the centre-left coalition is uh, really trailing 20% to 23% according to the exit poll. Yes, there is. Uh, I'm just looking at the Democratic Party now. It's uh, around 20, 23 percent, which is uh, not a huge score. Uh, my also put in uh, question the leadership of the current uh, secretary. And uh, all together, and that's yeah. Matteo Renzi, the that's former Matteo, prime minister, yeah. the former prime minister Matteo Renzi. And of course, the coalition together, I mean, they will have to start uh, compromising and accepting conditions uh, proposed by others. Do we have any idea what the main or the, the most likely possibilities for a coalition combination might be? Because at the moment it's like looking at, I mean, you can just take your pick, couldn't you? Yeah. Exactly, it's likely like that. I mean, you can take every party and try to, to add uh, the results and try to find out if we, if we can reach the majority. Really, actually, it's. I think it's really too soon to go like that. Uh, in the previous days, uh, there have been talks about negotiation between the Democratic Party and Forza Italia, for example, because it appears to be on the model of the broad coalition, like in Germany, for example. Uh, then we started thinking about movement, Cinque Stelle, Five Star Movement with Northern League. But really, honestly, uh, and that would be the the populist apocalypse that some people were so scared they of. They called populists. They call populists, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I mean, how many days, weeks, months do we think this? I mean, it's it's hard to even guess, isn't it? Is there a like sort the of German way? <laughs> will it be as long as Germany? It's taken five months. Yeah. Uh, will we see the same thing in Italy? Well, it might be the German way. We don't know actually. Uh, First of all, we have to wait at least until three o'clock in the morning, if not much longer, maybe tomorrow morning, early morning, six, seven o'clock to have, uh, I mean, secure data that we can uh, say something. In any case, you can have any kind of scenario and we will see a period of speculations, of negotiations. The most Eurosceptic uh, scenario, of course, will be the Five Star Movement uh, together with the North League. And that would be the scariest one for those who believed in the European project. Uh, but uh, as we were mentioning before, uh, there have been rumors of negotiations between uh, the Democratic Party and Berlusconi's Forza Italia. But uh, let's see them. Really, we have to see the numbers. How much caution should we have when we look at these numbers, Antonio? Uh, a lot of caution because, uh, as Silvia was saying, uh, until three in the morning uh, and maybe later, we, we really don't know. We can we we are we will not secure about what we are seeing, and um, so it's it's really difficult to make a call in this moment, uh, especially if we have this this gap between the the weakest part and the, and the strongest one. Um, I want to come back to the other question before, because uh, you, you asked uh, how long are we is going to take. At least a month bef before, the, uh, before the parliament has selected its, uh, its president, and then we, we start the negotiation. Right, so they, the new MPs, the new government, they all have to sit down in that building behind exactly. us and in exactly. the Senate exactly. before then, the president can actually give a mandate to try to form exactly. a coalition to the, the chosen party. Exactly, it's going to be like that. Uh, so it's going to be in April, at least. Uh, and then we will see if within two months, if you can have a government, that would be the most uh, positive option, I think. Two months, Silvia. 
Well, how can we guess? I, I don't really know. I don't really know. I mean, let's see what happens. Yeah. I'm wondering about your thoughts about the campaign and how it was, how it has compared to previous election campaigns. The last general election was in 2013. Has this one seemed more bitter because of the migrant crisis, for example, that has, has reared since, since that last election? Yes, it has. Uh, it has been a strange campaign, according to my opinion, uh, because we have seen so many different topics put on the agenda, uh, maybe sometimes we not really going into the details, in, deep into the details, uh, but I think it, this is the same for all, all electoral campaigns. Uh, this time I think that uh, the real difference was the, the fact that uh, this one political party had real news at the end of the campaign with this thing of the presentation by the Movimento Cinque Stelle, the Five Star Movement, of the list of the ministers. And this was honestly uh, seen from outside, really something really new, really interesting, maybe unusual according to the habits of, the, of this parliament, but it was different. So it was at least interesting to see if it has an impact on the, on the outcome of the, uh, of the vote. Antonio and Silvia stay with us. Uh, I know we're going to be speaking a lot more. And of course, we are here in Rome, the capital. There's a northern powerhouse in Milan, of course. James Reynolds is there. James, how are things looking there? Uh, people here are waiting to see whether or not those exit polls will be confirmed. And really, the League Party, formerly known as the Northern League, will be wanting to see whether or not it really has made it as a national force capable of joining or having an influential say in a government. Bear in mind that the party founded here in 1991 was a secessionist party. It wanted to leave Italy. Now it wants to lead the country it once rejected. So that's a turnaround for the League, uh, as indicated by its name. It's no longer the Northern League, it is the League, and it'll wait to see whether or not uh, its support holds up when the real results come in. How great, James, are the economic differences between North and South in Italy? Uh, in some ways, they are two different countries bolted together by the geography of Italy. Uh, when you look around Milan and then you take the train six hours to the south and you look around the south, you realise that there is a huge gulf in the GDP and also in the standard of living. And bear in mind, that was the fuel for the Northern League when it was a regional secessionist party. It essentially said, why should we have to subsidize the South? Now it wants to lead the South. It, it swapped Southerners as an enemy and it's brought in a new enemy, uh, migrants, illegal migrants, I should say. Uh, that's a point I put to Matteo Salvini, the party's leader, uh, a week or so ago, and he corrected me when I said migrants. He said, our enemy are illegal migrants. So it wants to be a national voice, but it still has to reconcile the fact that for many years, its rhetoric was aimed against the South, making it possibly difficult for Southerners uh, to vote for a party uh, which has had its loudest voice in the North. James, you've been travelling the country, as you mentioned, speaking to all, all sorts of key players. How has this election campaign felt to you? Angry and divisive. And I think to a lot of Italians, when they look back on it, they will look back at the town of Macerata as symbolic uh, of this election. Uh, in January, there was a story that a lot of Italians followed about the murder of a young Italian woman and the authorities have been looking into a migrant as a possible suspect in that. That raised the temperature of the debate about migration. And then uh, shortly after that, an Italian far-right sympathizer shot at six migrants in that town. So really, Macerata on all sides of the debate came to symbolize a very bitter and a very divisive campaign. OK, James, thank you very much. James Reynolds there reporting live from Milan. Well, back here in Rome, uh, I'm joined by Lara Comi, who's from Forza Italia, uh, the party of Silvio Berlusconi, uh, the party of the centre-right in a coalition with the Lega and the Brothers of Italy. Lara Comi, thank you very much for joining us. Thank How you disappointed are you with uh, the exit poll results so far? 
I'm waiting for the final results because I think that the exit poll, yes, it's more or less the intention of the voting, but uh, I'm waiting for the, the final results. Um, I, I'm, I'm happy because now um, my uh, coalition uh, is the first, uh, in the first position uh, because uh, mm, the Movimento Cinque Stelle now is not at the same level, but uh, we're waiting for. Just looking at the Forza Italia figures, 12.5% to 15.5%, the yeah. same as your coalition partners to the far right of you, the 12.5% to 15.5%. Is this the end of Silvio Berlusconi in Forza Italia? No, absolutely not, uh, because uh, I think that uh, we will uh, check uh, at the end, but the results uh, uh, is good for, for us. Uh, we also have the regional campaign in Lombardia and uh, in Lazio, and it's important also the Forza Italia results in uh, this uh, region. Uh, I think that it is important to understand what's happened uh, tomorrow uh, because uh, at the moment uh, nobody uh, is able to organize and to create a government. But if you have your coalition partners on the same or a greater share of your, your bloc's vote than your party, there is going to be a power struggle surely. Matteo Salvini of the Lega, very ambitious, surely wants to be in the position of, of being in charge. But pay attention that Matteo Salvini during this uh, campaign uh, declared that uh, he mm, didn't and doesn't want to go out to Europe, go out to Europe. And so uh, mm, about this argument, uh, we have the same line. We just uh, signature the program with 10 key points and uh, this is the coalition, this is the rule. He, I mean, he seems to have softened his line on Europe a little recently, but I mean, he in the past has said the euro was a yeah, crime against <laughs> humanity. No, no, no. I am in the popular party, and so I know very well uh, our value. But uh, if you check the last declaration of uh, Matteo Salmini, you understand that he would like to stay in Europe. Are you happy to have been in a coalition with Matteo Salvini who has said things like Mussolini achieved great things for Italy? <laughs> Uh, Mussolini is uh, one of my colleagues. I'm uh, happy if you consider Alessandro Mussolini and then if you consider another one. Benito I may have been the person he was well. talking about. <laughs> I understand, but I think that uh, the past is the past and the present is the present. We would like to discuss about the jobs, uh, about the unemployment, young unemployment, about the real problem that we have and not about the past. The past is closed for, for us and if you consider uh, the period of Mussolini, the period of the communist, okay, it is another era. Is it time for a big change in Forza Italia? I mean, we've seen Silvio Berlusconi trying to reinvent himself as a moderating force, trying to win the hearts of Italians who see him as a safe pair of hands. I mean, looking at these exit polls, that's clearly failed. I would like to use um, some words uh, and uh, some uh, ideas and concepts uh, that uh, uh, not Italian but uh, European and American newspaper and not only say, uh, say it about Berlusconi before this election. Uh, we are happy that Berlusconi is present because uh, um, today he is the key point that we have in the national uh, political, uh, in the Italian uh, political. So. Uh, if uh, also in the UK or in, the, in America uh, they declare that Berlusconi is the, the solution of this problem, I think that it's right. Lara Comi of Forza Italia, Silvio Berlusconi's party, thank you very much. Thank you we so shall much. see what happens. Well, let's move to the new force uh, in Italian politics that we've been hearing so much about, the Five Star Movement, who has uh, really done incredibly well. According to these exit polls, over 30% of the vote. My colleague Sara Moneta is at, at that Five Star uh, election event just across town from where we are. Sara, just tell us what the atmosphere is like there. Well, the atmosphere here is both of celebration and of great expectation. That's because everyone...
everyone is waiting to see how accurate these exit polls really will be. Because if the margin between the center-right coalition and the five-star movement is really narrow, then the pre uh, President Mattarella will have to choose the five-star movement to give them the mandate to form a government. And this is an historic result. We are talking of a party that 10 years ago didn't even exist. It started as a protest movement, a, pro a movement against political corruption, against inefficiencies of the public administration. And today, less than years later, first largest party in the Italian parliament. It's a great result, undoubtedly. Sara, many people wonder, what exactly does the Five Star Movement stand for? You've told us what they often say they're against and how they want to change things, but are they able to be defined by left, by right, by centre or none of the above? Well, that's the novelty of the Five Star Movement. When, when they came, uh, they presented themselves as a party, they said we are neither right or left wing because ideologies are gone like are something of the past. The Five Star Movement looks at the democracy, direct democracy. They think that the web and internet is the new way to, uh, to give uh, a voice to all voters and they are looking at the good of, uh, at the wealth of Italy, at the good things for Italy and the interests of the country. That's why, for instance, that candidates are people who don't have political experience, but they say we are honest people and that should, that should be enough for us to lead the country. So it's very difficult to define what the Five Star Movement stands for, also because many of their policies are agreed on online. They just publish their proposals and people can vote what they prefer to do and that's how they define their political agenda. So even on some issue, issues like for instance immigration or the European Union, the Five Star Movement listens to what their base wants and maybe that's also part uh, of the reason why they are being so successful because they really are listening to what voters want. For the good, for the good side and for the bad things as well. Sara Moneta there at the Five Star election event across Rome. Thank you very much for the moment. Uh, let's bring in the BBC's Europe editor, Katia Adler, who's with me and has been following things so closely. You've just been in Naples, Katia. I mean, just what sort of view do you have from the figures that we've got just at the moment of, of this, the scene? Well, two, two main ideas, really. First of all, what a slap in the face for the ruling centre-right. Uh, you know, they say they have started implementing reforms. They say that the Italian economy, after that double-dip recession, is slowly getting on its feet again. The voters were not with them today. Who were they with? Movimento Cinque Stelle, the five-star movement, that young upstart party that so many people have sneered at, is now, it looks like, Italy's largest party. It's not big enough to govern on its own. And we know, you and I, who know Italy so well, there are going to be weeks now of horse trading ahead, and Five Star may not actually make it into government. But the fact that tonight, in the lower and the upper house of parliament, and that means, I think the upper house of parliament is key here, because the uh, age that you can vote at is from 25 upwards. And Five Star movement is often being dismissed as something just for the young and the ignorant who just want something new and exciting. Well, that can't be if the over 25s voted for them today. That means they're onto something. And it is a very, very, very big nose thumb, if you like, to the traditional parties in Italy. These are the kind of election upsets that we've seen right across Europe now, uh, from Germany to Denmark to Sweden. There is a movement in politics and things are changing. But I think for Italian voters, things are not going to change fast enough. We're hearing, Katia, that the Five Star Movement have just said that they will be a pillar of the next government. You mentioned Europe. How is Europe going to be looking at this? Well, it's interesting if you look at this from a European perspective, because it's not long ago that European leaders pretty much forced Silvio Berlusconi out. This was the, like, at the height of the economic problems uh, here in Italy. Um, he was seen also as a laughing stock because he was surrounded by scandal. And in fact, he was then co uh, convicted of tax fraud, which means that he himself cannot stand today for parliament. But his party could really be a kingmaker and surrounded by 
populist figures, for want of a better word, Five Star on the one side and Lega on the other, that anti-immigration party, Europe now looks to Silvio Berlusconi as an elder statesman and a kind of a calming figure. So that actually that's quite ironic considering the past. And it shows sort of what in a state of turmoil Italian politics really is. But again, I think it's interesting turmoil tonight but I think when you talk to a lot of voters today I was in Milan before Naples and um, now in Rome many feel that in the end they're cynical that after all that horse trading that's going to go on there in the lower house of parliament whether things really will change. You've been all over the country as you mentioned uh, how much has the ideology of the far right filtered into the mainstream in in people's views here particularly of immigration well we know the anti-immigration rhetoric was I mean that was a bandwagon that most opposition parties jumped on in this election campaign it was such a divisive campaign people really had to think you know what can we use to get extra votes you could say it was a cheap trick for many Italians not at all it's something they really are worried about hundreds and hundreds of thousands of mainly African migrants have come by boat to Italy over the last few years most of them actually wanted to go north into the rest of Europe Europe, but the rest of Europe didn't want them. They've got stuck here in Italy and actually even though the amount of non-Italians living in Italy is only around 10%, in voter polls, they, they think it's at least three or four times more than that. They feel threatened by globalization, by unemployment and by migration as well. So as far as the far right rhetoric, again, I think you can see a European theme that I think the parties of the center, if you look at Berlusconi's party, for example, are stealing also rhetoric more from the far right because they know it's a vote winner, number one, anti-immigration, but then also things like security. That's played pretty high too. And you mentioned uh, at the start of our chat, the left, I mean, where are they in this? The centre left, we've got Matteo Renzi, the former Prime Minister, in charge of that. But, I mean, they've really taken a beating. That's right. I mean, Matteo Renzi, his nickname was Il Rotomatore. You know, he was a bulldozer and he was going to pull down all the old legislation um, here in the Italian Parliament and make a new Italy. Well, voters think he failed and they think that Five Star has got more of an opportunity. But again, I think with the centre left, it's a European theme once again. Where is the centre left, you know, across Europe? Today, the centre left agreed to join a coalition in Germany along with Angela Merkel's party, but on the back of a performance that was its worst ever in modern German history. I think across Europe, voters are punishing the centre-left still for the economic crisis. Their traditional base, the workers that expect to be protected by the centre-left, actually saw the centre-left propping up government decisions to bail out the banks before the people. And that's something that voters will not forgive them for. And I think it's a mixture of reasons here in Italy, but that will be in the mix tonight. And what can we expect now? I mean, over the forthcoming hours, we're going to get exit polls becoming slightly clearer. And then when is the definitive result of, of what isn't very definitive at all in the election going to be with us? Well, I think we could do an Italian gesture here, which would be... Who knows? Who knows? We don't know. This is Italian politics, right? We don't know what kind of horse trading is going to go ahead. Certainly, um, Silvio Berlusconi is going to try and push for his right-wing coalition. I take issue with it being called centre-right because we have some pretty far-right uh, elements in there, even though that's kind of what it's being labelled at the moment. He's going to try and go for the mathematics of that one. But, you know, tonight, you know, in, we're in, at the lower house of parliament, but in buildings all over Italy, politicians will be huddled together as Italians will be in front of their television screens worrying and wondering about the mathematics who's going to pull it off and who is going to lead the next Italian government right now right now we really cannot predict but it will be hard for Italy's new biggest party to make it into government I think to find coalition friends in government it's it's gonna be interesting to watch Katia we we talked about immigration being such a dominant issue in this campaign the economy also I mean the, the unemployment rates down south are eye-wateringly high particularly amongst the young I mean, it's youth unemployment again. I mean, we saw the same problem in France, and that's why Marine Le Pen, even though she lost the presidential vote, she did very well indeed. Youth unemployment is chronic in Italy, particularly um, in the south, where you see, you know, in parts of Sicily, it's up to 50%. Italy-wide, it can be sort of 30%. This is unacceptable for young people and their parents to tolerate. So, you know, yes, that's the kind of picture that, that we're seeing. Katia Adler, thank you very much, our Europe editor. Uh, let's go back up north to Milan and to James Reynolds, who's normally here in Rome. James, talking to so many people in Rome, I got often got the same answer, complete and utter exhaustion with the politicians that are in charge. A lot of people telling me today they weren't even going to bother voting. How, how is the situation up there? Well, well, here's the funny thing. People say that 
but then turnout in Italy is usually reasonably high. In other words, people grumble, but they grumble on their way, by and large, to the polling station. And older people tend to come out and vote more than younger people. Silvio Berlusconi is someone who knows that. He knows that older people watch TV, which is why a lot of his campaign uh, was based on TV, hoping for a strong turnout among older voters to try to counteract, as you and Katia Adler have been discussing, the potentially strong showing of the five-star movement among young people. But just one point here from Milan, which applies, of course, to Rome as well. You don't get a rosette in this election for being the biggest single party. That doesn't get you anywhere. You've got to find coalition partners. So if Five Star is the biggest single party, it's an enjoyable evening for them. But the next few weeks will be difficult for them. They would have to find coalition partners to get into government. James, thank you very much for the moment. Uh, still with me, Antonio Scarazzini and Silvia Francescon. And uh, I'm wondering how, how much patience you think Italians have uh, while they wait for a government to be formed. The talks could go on for so long, as we were already discussing. Well, I think, uh, well, some people are saying also that there might be re-election. I don't think this is a likely scenario because that would be a sort of revolution. I mean, think about uh, the Five Star Movement arriving first. Uh, I don't think they are uh, happy with the possibility of going uh, for election. And uh, I think uh, they will have to wait, uh, you know, until, uh, until it's done. I mean, uh, we will have to learn to be patient in this regard. Antonio. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think she's right. They have to, they have to have some extent of patience this time. Uh, or, or actually, it happened already in 2013 with the, with the forming of the government led by, the, by Enrico Letta. So it's not really a, a news for Italy. Um, the thing is that uh, uh, this time we don't really know if the first coalition is going to find other allies in the other coalition within the parliament. Or, and I think this, is, this will be the biggest uh, question mark over these elections, these results, is the will of the Five Star Movement to ally with other parties and if other parties are going to ally with the Five Star Movement. I think this will be the... Yeah, I think this is a very delicate question because the Five Star Movement has uh, a big chance to rule the country, but at the same time, the one they decide to go with will determine their fate, I think. Because uh, if they go with the North League, not necessarily their electorate would be happy with that. So it would be very, very interesting how the Five Star Movement uh, will move. Now I'm pleased to say Paola Diana is uh, here with us. She's an author and entrepreneur. Thank you for squeezing in under our tent, sheltering from the rain here in yeah. Rome. What are you making of it? So I'm not surprised at all, I tell you the truth. Uh, everyone knew already in the palaces that this would have been the numbers, especially because they made this electoral law with a purpose not to let the Five Star Movement win too much. So everyone knew it already. The real disgrace is the electoral law. But I tell you the truth, I'm not worried. And people, they shouldn't be worried because actually in this Italy, I think it's better to have a coalition government than a five-star full government, I tell you the truth, or a populist government led by maybe Matteo Salvini. So I'm really happy for the coalition. And I actually, I hope that Emma Bonino will do better than the exit poll. I think she will she get- She leads the more Europe party. What, yeah. They I might get about 3%, is that right? I think a little bit more. At the beginning, they thought less, but now now she, they think even four eventually, and you know she's an amazing politician. I mean, she did everything we have now, you know, the divorce, the abortion, and uh, you know the, all these liberalist, uh, you know, laws. Uh, we only have to thank her for that. So maybe she could be a good one, you know, <laughs> to rule the country. Sylvia, no, I totally agree. Um, I think uh, her merit was to put Europe in the agenda of these elections. You know, we always complain that Europe is not in the discussion of the elections. I think. I think she had a double merit. The first one was also to, if you want to, to influence her allies to talk more about Europe, to be less shy about it, to 
to be strong on that um, Macron like uh, kind of style. On the other hand, uh, you could see really the difference between those who have a European project in their minds and have a vision on that and those who are very, very skeptic about Europe. Because what has been said before by Lara Comi is true that the language of the North League has softened, even the language of the Five Star Movement has softened towards Europe. But uh, let's face it, uh, everybody wants to have a strong Italy in Europe. But how you go to Europe, the method you use, the instrument you use, will make a difference. So there you will see a huge of a difference between those who want, for example, a European finance minister, meaning the Democratic Party together with Emma Bonino, and those who uh, absolutely think, OK, let's have a say in Europe, but be very skeptical. I mean, those who go also to visit Orban, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I think it's true that pure Europa, uh, more Europe, or, uh, is really an interesting, uh, an interesting part of these elections. First of all, because actually, if it's going to to score more than three percent, it's going to take some seats away from the from the Democratic Party, and this will be interesting in the formation of the Parliament. On the other side, it, it is true it puts on the agenda the European topic, uh, even in their name. So it's quite really uh, news, and I'm not really sure about what uh, they can do about the uh, about the formation of the government. The government. This we'll have we'll have to see again. Uh, of course, we need to find uh, Italy has to find a government to uh, cope at least with some financial obligations in Europe within this year, within 2018, within the European semester. Uh, so to some regards, uh, I think that Europe will be a driver for the formation of the government, but I'm not really sure that it's going to have an influence as uh, we saw before with Juncker making some declarations that were really not appreciated in Italy. <laughs> Stay with us, uh, all three of you, if you will. And uh, just to remind any of you just joining us, uh, we have got the exit polls that have come out uh, just, what, just over half an hour ago as the polls closed here in Italy. And uh, what it shows is no majority for any party. Uh, the largest party now, though, according to the exit polls, uh, is the Five Star Movement, with uh, possibly over 30% of the vote. So that is a remarkable achievement from a party, or it doesn't even call itself a party, it's a movement that came out of nowhere just a few years ago as an anti-establishment tide. Uh, let's go over to its election event and talk to my colleague Sara Moneta, who is across the city there. Sara, how are they reacting? Well, we're still waiting for Luigi Di Maio to arrive, the leader of the Five Star Movement, but the atmosphere here of, is of celebration. They have been talking of an historical and it really is because this party that 10 years ago wasn't even a party now it's Italy's largest political formation to talk more about that joining me now is Elisabetta Fiorito she is a journalist for Radio 24 solo 24 ore Elisabetta what is the key of the success of the five star movement they give hope to the people that this country can change and they, they identify themselves with the leaders because the leaders are normal people like you and me. Uh, Luigi Di Maio was a student five was a student five years ago. Alessandro Di Battista was uh, uh, like a, a, a normal person and everything. So the normality is the key of their success. The fact that this country can become normal. Well, uh, how likely do you think it is now that President Sergio Mattarella will give the Five Star Movement the mandate to form a government? Because they are still slightly under the centre-right uh, uh, coalition, but they are the largest party in Parliament at the moment. At the moment, they are the first party uh, in Italian Parliament. So it would be difficult for Mattarella to decide. But this electoral law uh, gives power to the coalitions. So the center-right uh, coalition is now the first coalition in Italy. 
But there is a problem inside the centre-right coalition because there is a challenge between Silvio Berlusconi and Matteo Salvini that they are tied at this moment tonight. So it would be difficult for Mattarella to choose because otherwise if the uh, five-star movement decides that he can it can join other parties to have a government, like the Constitution says, then Mattarella could choose also to give the mandate to, to form a, a new government to Luigi Di Mac. But I think it would rather be center-right that Mattarella has to choose because of our Constitution. Well, Elisabetta Fiorito, thank you very much for joining us. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Well, I've been talking to some politicians from the Five Star Movement here, and what they are telling me is that whoever the Prime Minister designated will be, he won't be able to ignore the fact that the Five Star Movement tonight is Italy's largest party in Parliament. Back to you, Calvi. Yeah, extraordinary. The Five Star Movement it has been making such waves during the campaign and uh, now really will be interesting to see how its uh, voice of opposition would translate into being a pillar of government as it says it will be in the next government. That's what it said since the uh, exit poll came out. Now let's just show you a graphic I think we can show you of that exit poll. Now we have to be a little bit cautious with these figures because in previous elections I think the last election it was a 5% margin of error but what it does show if you if you put these into three main blocks the center right is out in front uh, with up to 36% with the three parties that are combining in that and that is in the lead, but still far short of the 40% needed to form a government by itself. Uh, the Five Star Movement, that remarkable uh, result, 29.5% to 32.5% potentially, and then trailing, you can imagine, this is the governing party coalition, the left wing, the centre-left coalition uh, is trailing between 24.5% and 27.5%. And but. Uh, all in all, over 20 parties in this rather complicated election. We were talking a little bit earlier about the new election system. It's been completely untested. That makes everything even more unpredictable because it's a hybrid first-past-the-post and proportional representation system. So uh, it really has been a difficult thing to try to predict. Uh, my guests are still with me. Uh, just perhaps a final thought. Uh, Paola, first of all, I mean, you have found this... I mean, this has been interesting in all sorts of ways, this election. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting and scary, of course, uh, but uh, this is Italy. Unfortunately, uh, I don't know if you remember, but our first republic and all the first governments, they were like this. We have a real proportional electoral law and we were changing governments all the time, but actually the, it was stable. Italy was stable. I know that outside Italy, people, they don't quite understand that. So, but this is, I, I don't know, Italians are made like this. I also respect a lot people who voted for Five Star. I didn't because I don't think they're right for government. But I respect them because it means that actual politicians failed. And especially Renzi, I'm afraid to say that. He's a big loser of this election. We have to admit that. You know, because he called this kamikaze referendum and you know what I mean you know because, because we have got 20 seconds I must just get one final word yeah. in from Sylvia well I think the picture is precisely this we have to wait until very late in the morning I think uh, tomorrow and uh, let's see we are out of time and thank you very much, uh, all three of you, for being with us uh, in you. these rather challenging weather conditions here in Rome. But so we were expecting a couple more exit polls that should become a little bit clearer in the forthcoming couple of hours. And then uh, in the middle of the night, we should have the definitive results. But we are expecting a hung parliament here in this Italian general election. From me, Karin Ginoni in Rome, for the moment, goodbye.